Hey everyone, this is Peter from the Firebase team. In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement sign in with Apple using Firebase Auth in your app on iOS. This video assumes that you know the basics about Firebase authentication already. If you'd like to get a refresher, I recommend you watch my introductory video first and then come back here. At the end of this video, you will know how sign in with Apple works, how you can connect sign in with Apple to your Firebase project how to handle the sign-in flow in your iOS app, what a nonce is, and how it helps us to protect the sign-in flow against the replay attack, how to update the user's account in Firebase with the information you receive from Apple, and how to sign out. That's quite a bit to get through, so let's get started. To make it easier to understand how all of this works, I've created a sample app which you can download from GitHub to help you get started. The app itself isn't too exciting. It's just a simple app that lets users choose their favorite number. And at the moment, I store this information locally in user defaults. But later, I like to store this data in the cloud so users can retrieve this information on all of their other devices or even share it with their friends. My goal is to use Cloud Firestore to manage the user's data. But before I can do that, users need to sign in so I know who they are and so I can store the correct information for each individual user. Before you can use Firebase authentication, you need to add the Firebase SDK to your app. I've already done this for my sample app. But if you'd like to know how I did that, check out this other video in which I walk you through the steps of setting up a Firebase project using Swift Package Manager. The next step is to add the Firebase Auth library to all the targets in which I want to use Firebase authentication. However, since I already did that in the previous video about Firebase Auth, I don't need to do this again. And the same applies to the next step. To use Firebase authentication, we need to activate it in the Firebase console. But as you can see, I already did this for my project, so no need to do it again. However, I do need to enable sign in with Apple in the list of authentication providers for my app. You can enable and use as many authentication providers in your app as you'd like. By doing so, you allow users to sign in using their preferred authentication mechanism. Some users might prefer signing in with email and password, while others might prefer Google sign in or sign in with Apple, as this gives them this really smooth one tap login experience. This also allows you to let users link multiple sign-in mechanisms. For example, if your users signed in using email and password, but they later would like to connect their Apple ID to your app, that's possible if you implement account linking. Account linking is an important topic that we will look at in more detail in one of the next videos. In this video, though, I want to show you how to implement sign in with Apple. So let me go ahead and activate the sign in with Apple authentication provider for my project. One thing you need to keep in mind if you use any other OAuth based authentication mechanism, such as Google sign in or Facebook login, Apple's App Store review guidelines require you to also implement sign in with Apple. There are some exceptions to this rule, so I recommend you check out the current version of the App Store review guidelines to be on the safe side. By the way, if you forget to enable a provider before using it, Firebase Auth will throw an error message when you try to sign in. That's one of the reasons why you want to implement some error handling in your app. Proper error handling will make it a lot easier to figure out what's wrong when things aren't working as expected. To make development easier, I recommend using the Firebase emulator. You can think of the Firebase emulator suite as your own personal instance of Firebase running on your local machine. Since everything runs locally, you don't run the risk of messing up your production data, and you also avoid stepping on each other's toes when you are sharing a development project with your teammates. Another benefit is that once you've installed everything, the emulator suite also works when you're offline or on a slow network. I've already installed and configured the Firebase emulator suite in the previous video, so feel free to check this out if you'd like to see how this is done. I'll start the emulator using the following command line. This tells the emulator to persist any user accounts we create and later restore them the next time I run the same command. In fact, I've previously created the user account, and as you can see, the emulator has restored this user from disk. This saves quite a bit of time, especially if you have more than just a few test accounts. To connect your app to the emulator suite, 
add the following code to your Firebase setup code. Now, with all this preliminary work out of the way, I can start implementing Sign In with Apple in my app. The first thing I want to do is add a Sign In with Apple button to my login view. In iOS 14, Apple introduced a Swift UI version of the Sign In with Apple button, which makes our lives a lot easier. Under the hood, this button will use Apple's AS authorization Apple ID provider to handle the Sign In with Apple flow. The button has three parameters. The first one is for setting the correct label, and you can choose between Sign In with Apple, Continue with Apple, and Sign Up with Apple. The default for the first parameter is Sign In, and since this is what we want to use, I will just use the default value, which means I can drop the first parameter. The second parameter is a closure that will be called for configuring the request that the button sends to Apple's AS authorization Apple ID provider. And the third parameter is a callback that Apple will call once the authentication request has completed, either successfully or with an error. To keep my view code nice and clean, I will not implement these callbacks here. Instead, I've created two additional methods on the view model that I can call. I have named them handle sign in with Apple request and handle sign in with Apple completion. And as a final step, I will tweak the design of the button a bit. So first, I will make sure that the button looks great in both dark and light mode. And I also think it's a bit small in comparison to the login button. So I will use the frame view modifier to increase the height. And finally, I will adjust the corner radius so both buttons use the same corner radius. With the UI in place, I can now navigate to the view model to implement the two methods that the sign-in with Apple button calls. First, I will implement handle sign-in with Apple request. It receives an instance of AS authorization Apple ID request that I can adjust to meet the needs of my app. So in my application, I want to be able to address the user with their full name, and I also want to be able to send them emails. You should be aware that Apple is very specific about requesting as little information about the user as possible. If you don't need the user's email address, you shouldn't request it. Second, I will add a nonce to the request. Now, you might be wondering what a nonce is. Well, it is a random number that is used to prevent replay attacks. I'll demonstrate how this works once I've finished implementing the entire flow. To compute the nonce, I make use of a function called random nonce string that I copied from the Firebase documentation for sign-in with Apple. To make sure an attacker cannot steal a nonce, I will then compute the SHA-256 hash of the nonce. SHA-256 is a hash function that takes a string of arbitrary length and outputs a value that is 256 bits long. So no matter if I hash a single character or an entire Wikipedia article, the output will always be 256 bits. It is virtually impossible to invert the hash back to the original form, and this is why SHA-256 is a popular algorithm for storing passwords. When using a hash function like SHA-256, the only way to verify two passwords are the same is to compute the hash for both passwords and then see if the hashes match. Signing with Apple button will take this request and pass it to AS authorization Apple ID provider to start the sign-in flow. Once the user has finished the flow by using Face ID or Touch ID to authenticate themselves, we will receive a result type in the handle sign-in with Apple completion callback. So I'll first check if the request has failed. This might happen, for example, when the user aborts the sign-in process. OK, now let's see how we can handle the success case. I'll use if case let to extract the result value, which in this case is of type AS authorization. AS authorization has two properties, provider and credential. We are interested in credentials of type AS authorization Apple ID credential, so I'll perform a type check using the conditional type cast operator. By doing this, the compiler will perform a type cast and assign the result to Apple ID credential. This Apple ID credential contains the ID token for the user that has just signed in. B 
Before I can go ahead and exchange this ID token for a Firebase ID token, I will perform a quick check to see if the current nonce is set. This is to make sure that it was actually our app that initiated the sign-in flow. Once this is established, I will extract the ID token and then turn it into a string. In the next step, I use Firebase's OAuth provider to create a credential. This credential contains the name of the provider, apple.com in this case, the ID token we just received, and the raw unhashed nonce. And now the moment has come to actually perform the sign-in. I will use async await to call this API, so I'll need to wrap the call inside a task. Also, since the call can throw an error, I will wrap it inside a do-try-catch block. And now I can call auth.auth.signin with credential with the credential I've just created. This call will create a Firebase user based on the credential I provide. So now that we've got everything in place, I will run the app and show you how the nonce is being used to protect the flow against reply attacks. When I tap the sign in with Apple button, the handle sign with Apple request method is called, and here we can see the nonce and the hashed nonce. So let's continue the flow. Back in the simulator, I now need to sign in. If you're surprised that I have to present my Apple ID password, this is because the iOS simulator doesn't support biometric authentication at the moment. OK, so once I've entered my password, Panel sign with Apple completion will be called. Everything went well, so we will jump into the success branch of this statement. And now let's look at the ID token. This is a JWT, so I can now copy the value and inspect it, for example, using a tool like jwt.io. On the decoded side, I can see a bunch of interesting fields. For example, I can see that Apple actually is the issuer of this ID token and that my app is the audience for it. I can also see when the token was issued and when it will expire. And down here, we can see the hashed nonce. So let's make a mental note of this value. And then back in Xcode, the next instruction will call Firebase's auth provider to create the credential that we will then pass into the sign-in method. Note that we include the raw nonce in this credential. Now, once we call the sign-in method, Firebase will extract a nonce from the ID token. It's essentially doing what we just did using the jwt.io tool. Then, Firebase will take the raw nonce, that is this value, and compute its SHA-256 hash. It will then compare that value with the one from the ID token. So let's quickly jump back into the browser and do that too. And there you have it. Both values match. Since the nonce has a different value each time the user signs in, this process effectively prevents replay attacks. So let's resume execution. And voila, I'm signed in. You might notice that Firebase doesn't automatically transfer the user's full name from the Apple ID token to the Firebase user. The reason for this is that Apple wants to make sure that developers take the user's privacy seriously. This is why they only send the user's full name the first time the user signs into your app. For all following sign-ins, Apple will not fill out the full name field of the ID token. At Firebase, we decided to not automatically transfer the user's full name when they first sign into your application, but instead leave it to developers to implement this themselves. This way, you as the developer of your app can make sure that you get the user's consent to use their full name and link it to any other personally identifiable information that you might store about this user. This approach also makes sure we don't accidentally overwrite any display name that you previously set. OK, so let me show you how you can read the user's full name from the Apple ID token and assign it to the Firebase user. I am first going to call this method I defined earlier, update display name. It takes two parameters, the Firebase user we want to update and the Apple ID credential we want to read the full name from. Inside the method, you can see that I will first make sure the display name on the Firebase user is empty to avoid accidentally overwriting it. 
I will then create a profile change request to modify the Firebase user. Next, I will extract the first and last name of the user from the Apple ID credential by using this extension method I created on ACE authorization Apple ID credential. I will then commit any changes to Firebase Auth, which will write them back to Firebase. And finally, I will update the display name on the view model. This is because making a change to the user's display name does not trigger the authorization state change listener that we set up earlier. And this is how you update the username when you sign in with Apple. Signing the user out works just like for all the other Firebase authentication providers. A call to auth.auth.signout is all that it takes to sign the user out locally. Firebase will remove the cached ID token from the keychain, so the next time the user starts the app, they will have to sign in again. Keep in mind that you will have to reset your app into an unauthorized state after a call to sign out. The easiest way to do this is to use the authentication state listener and reset the UI when you receive nil as the user. As you can see in my implementation, it will reset the UI and authentication state when it receives nil. And there you have it, signing in with Apple using Firebase authentication. I think sign with Apple is a great way to let users sign into your app. It's much more convenient than email and password authentication as it makes use of the biometric features of the user's phone. All they have to do is to look at their phone to unlock it with Face ID or put a finger on the fingerprint sensor to use Touch ID. Using a federated identity provider like Sign In with Apple relieves users of the burden to come up with strong passwords for every single app they want to sign into. Plus, Sign In with Apple requires that users turn on second factor authentication for their Apple ID, so it is much more secure. If you'd like to take a look at the source code for the sample app, you can do so because it's available on GitHub. If you found this video useful, give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel as we've got a bunch of other videos coming up about the other Firebase authentication providers. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.